Belgian bishops are calling on Pope Francis to lay aside a fellow bishop who sexually abused not one but two of his nephews. But Rome's reluctant to axe the predator prelate, even though it could derail Pope Francis' upcoming visit to Belgium. Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Milton's Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, the bells and bishops are kicking up quite a row on sh and shaming Pope Francis really publicly in view of his visit. What's going on? Uh, Brian, it's not just the Belgian bishops, but now the Flemish Parliamentary Commission investigating clerical sex abuse has joined hands with the Belgian bishops, and they are demanding to know why Pope Francis has not acted to lay size this predator prelate. Now, this is quite a famous prelate from a very important diocese. We're talking about Bishop uh, Roger van Kelewe, who uh, you can see his picture there, who was forced to resign in 2010 uh, following allegations and admission of clerical sex abuse. Uh, they've been asking the Vatican for quite some time to act, but, uh, you know, we just don't know why the Vatican remains uh, silent and not willing to act. But more importantly, uh, the bishops say that Pope Francis is going to sabotage his own trip to Belgium next year, this year, if he does not act immediately. So what's this Belgian bishop accused of, actually? And, and have the allegations been proven? Well, uh, the, as you said, uh, Bishop Sanke Lugle has been accused of abusing not just one, but two of his nephews. In fact, he caused quite a stir in 2011 when he was interviewed by a Belgian television network. He admitted to abusing a second nephew, but, but he said at the same time, I'm not a pedophile, and that caused a real outrage among uh, Belgians. Now, the Belgian bishops met, uh, you know, with the Vatican and appealed in 2017. They did it again in 2019. And then in October 2023, last year, once again, they pleaded with Pope Francis to lay aside Bishop Frank Kelewe. And then uh, in January 2022, the Prime Minister of Belgium, Alexander de Kroon, met the Apostolic Nuncio, the Pope's ambassador to Belgium, uh, Archbishop Franco Coppola, and again pleaded with him. But all these pleas seem to have fallen on deaf ears. Now, the uh, Belgian bishops are not only demanding that Pope Francis lay size this credit of credit, but also uh, meet with victims when he comes to Belgium this year. Okay, so before moving on, I just want to clarify that you mentioned the word admit. The bishop here actually admitted to abusing both of his nephews? Absolutely. But as I said, you know, he, he said, I've done this, but I'm not a pedophile. Okay, so he's admitted. So we're talking about has it proven? It doesn't need to be proven. He's actually admitted to it. Uh, yeah. Where is this predator bishop currently based and what's his current status? Uh, he's 87 years old now. Um, he's based in France. And uh, the uh, two or three of the Belgian bishops from the bishops' conference, including Bishop Bonnet of Antwerp, went uh, in October 2023 and met him uh, at the same time when, you know, they would meet the Pope. And they pleaded with him. They requested him to write a letter of resignation and, you know, step down himself and just, just go. But nothing seems to have happened. Now... Why is Pope Francis, uh, we, we're talking about going to Belgium. They're calling for him, him to lay aside his bishop. He's not. He's saying, I want to go to Belgium. They're saying, well, how can you come to Belgium? Uh, why is the Pope Francis going to Belgium anyway? When uh, And when did he announce that particular visit? Well, in an interview... Uh in December 2023, Pope Francis, you know, shared this news with journalists that he would be going to Belgium 
the um, Vatican has not officially confirmed that as yet, but uh, apparently is going for the 600th anniversary of one of the, the oldest Catholic universities in Belgium. So now, what of Pope Francis's favorites? I mean, the plot thickens here, or deepens, you might say. One of Pope Francis' favorite Belgian cardinals uh, is involved with this bishop as well. Uh, and he doesn't come off looking too well in all of this. Can you tell us who we're talking about and, and the angle that uh, this cardinal plays in all this? Uh, well, uh, Brad, that's a very good question because, you know, uh, people have a rep a reported and even written books on the Sargalan Mafia, uh, some regarded as conspiracy theories, some take it seriously, but Cardinal Gottfried Daniels, a very liberal cardinal who, it is said, plotted to... Uh, uh, turn the Catholic Church into a much more heterodox organization uh, and a cardinal who stepped out on the lodge with Pope Francis when he was, uh, you know, the, uh, elected and his first uh, meeting with uh, the people of God. Uh, now, Godfrey Daniels, who died recently, he, an audio was leaked, and uh, Bishop Godfrey uh, Daniels, Cardinal Godfrey Daniels, was talking to one of the nephews of the predator bishop, Bishop Frank Lewe. And he was telling the nephew, don't uh, go ahead and, you know, stop accusing your uncle in public, basically getting the nephew to withdraw all his allegations. And that uh, leaked audio caused quite a stir again. Well, so you got a bishop here who's admitting to uh, to sexually abusing two of his, not one, but two of his nephews, admitting to it. It's in public. And Daniels here is talking to one of the nephews, and that's a leaked audio to the public that says, don't go public with this. And we still don't have this bishop laicized yet. This bishop is still just, uh, he's, he's not defrocked. He's not in any way censored. He's not uh, uh, in, in, under any penalties or anything. Is that right? Absolutely. He's, he's free to minister and, you know, uh, act like a priest in, in any part of, of Belgium. Now, he was also in, in charge of Belgium. Belgium has like 450, 400, almost 500 cases of sex abuse going on. And, and the Belgian bishops are saying, hey, Pope Francis, you're going to come here and meet with these particular individuals. They're not abused necessarily by the bishop, but it's hard to see how those cases would have been adjudicated or handled properly if the bishop himself is uh, a pedophile, uh, which admittedly he is, even though he denies the term. Uh, it's seems kind of beyond belief that the Pope would come there and meet with, with these victims when the leader of that particular diocese himself was a pedophile and nothing's been done with that. Um, your thoughts? Uh, Brad, you know, I, I think you and I are getting a bit tired of using this cliche, the foxes seem to be in charge of the hen house. And what is, uh, you know, particularly... Um, what really outrages uh, Catholics is not so much the fact that so many priests uh, have been exposed as predators, but the fact that all this has been covered up, and not just, you know, uh, over Pope Francis's reign, but it's been covered up for decades, if not centuries. It's finally coming out. Uh, but uh, uh, despite things like Vox, uh, Vox Estes, uh, despite uh, Pope Francis repeatedly saying that he has a policy of zero tolerance, that despite spending so much of money and flying so many bishops from all over the world in 2019 for the Conference on Clerical Sex Abuse, nothing seems to happen on the ground. Now, speaking of... Not so zero tolerance. Uh, you know, meanwhile, there's a, a more news, even more news, about Father Marco Ivan Rupnik, uh, the ex-Jesuit accused of sexually abusing at least 25 nuns. Uh, could you bring us up to date on what's happening there? Well, a couple of rather shocking developments. First of all, the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith is now saying they can't deal with people like Father Rupnik because he has abused nuns. 
who they don't regard as vulnerable persons under the terms set out by Pope Francis's divorce estes. Now, this is very surprising because uh, people have done doctoral dis dissertations recently. We've, we've reported on them. Uh, abused nuns uh, have come out in public. I mean, even nuns who have been raped. Uh, uh, people have talked about, these nuns have talked about the endemic abuse of nuns in Africa, for example. And yet, uh, uh, despite the very clear demonstration that uh, because these nuns are vulnerable, they are abused, priests can take advantage of them, uh, the DDF is saying, no, we, 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 we can't get involved because, you know, uh, we have, uh, are dealing with minors, vulnerable adults, but nuns are not vulnerable adults. So this is one aspect of the Rupnik saga ongoing, sadly. He, too, has not been laicized, uh, despite the fact that he is accused of abusing over 25 nuns. But now, uh, Domani, the Italian newspaper, had just reported yet another victim coming out and telling her story. Uh, she was a nun with the Loyola community. Uh, Rupnik co-founded that, and that had just been been dissolved by the Vatican, but the uh, nun tells her, I think she's the fifth or sixth victim who has publicly come out and shared her testimony, and this nun talks about how Rupnik physically abused her by grabbing her hand by squeezing it so hard that he broke her finger, even though she was pleading with him to let go. Uh, 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 Rupnik then pre prevented her from getting medical attention. Uh, and he told her, uh, when he broke her finger, he said, now you have the eternal seal of the Society of Jesus, and added, I did it out of love. Uh, uh, this sister also talks about how a Rupnik, uh, you know, confession with him was a very problematic time because uh, every nun he met for confession, she says, he would lock the room uh, when the nun sat for confession and put the key in his pocket. And yet, Rupnik is free. Uh, no action is being taken against him as Bishop uh, Fangalua. And just a reminder to the people, he was actually excommunicated for absolving an accomplice. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, he was excommunicated by the DDF for uh, absolving in the confessional a nun, an Italian nun, with whom he had uh, sexual relations. And then reinstated, and now he's actually back in and then act reinstated active ministry a now. A month, precisely. Wow. Well, it's, it's hard to, to believe the Vatican uh, holds a zero tolerance policy regarding Catholic clerics who sexually abuse people when considering these glaring cases, uh, the Belgian bishop uh, he simply retires, no public humiliation of being defrocked, uh, and removing his bishop attire would protect the flock from being abused again by him. And Father Rubnik is actually a functioning priest now after he was excommunicated. Uh, you know, where's the protection of the flock from this priest whom dozens of nuns have accused of being a predator? Uh, it's beyond believable. Attaining justice really in this lifetime is actually a merciful thing. Uh, putting justice, justice off until judgment day is a frightful proposition. Pray that such men have the good sense to accept God's mercy now that, uh, you know, it comes in the form of timely judgment in this lifetime. Jules, thank you so much for the two reports and giving us the overall picture. Thank you, Brad. Thanks again for watching today's episode of Rome Dispatch. This show is brought to you by donors like Real Estate for Life. If you're looking to buy or sell a home and want to support our mission, visit realestateforlife.org. Again, that's realestateforlife.org. Be sure to tell them Church Militant sent you. God bless.